Procrastinator, a person who delays or puts things off, like work chores, or other actions, that should be done in a timely manner. All of us procrastinate on some tasks and goals. Some procrastinate on learning for exams or writing a thesis. Others delay writing a book or starting their own business. Or exercising regularly and fixing their diet. So if you've ever beaten yourself up about not doing the work, know that. You're not alone. We all do it in some form. The purpose of this video is to identify what your type of procrastination is and what you can do to overcome it. If you can see yourself in one of these types, you can start fixing it much more easily by focusing on the specific problems that arise from it. Let's start with the first one. Perfectionist procrastination. Perfectionists are always striving for the best and, as such, are constantly criticizing their own work. For some perfectionists, the fear of failing, or producing work to a low standard, can be so overwhelming they never actually get around to starting anything. How to beat it Philosopher and professor emeritus at Stanford University, John Perry, thinks procrastinating can actually be a good thing for perfectionists. As long as they have a lot of time to do a task, they fantasize about doing a perfect job. Leaving it till the last minute is a way of giving oneself permission to do a merely adequate job. 99% of the time a merely adequate job is all that is needed. Try looking back at the last 5 jobs you completed, were they all perfect? Probably not. Were they sufficient? Chances are you're already working to a high standard. So stop giving yourself a hard time. Identifying times when you didn't do the perfect job, but the consequences were the same as if you did, will help you to overcome your perfectionist routine and stop procrastinating. The resourceless. If you're using a lack of anything for doing the work, you are the resourceless procrastinator. Time. You're just too busy right now. You have to wait until we get more time on your hands to start working on the goal. Money. You can't afford to start now, it's just too expensive. Let's just wait until the financial situation is better. Knowledge. How am I supposed to achieve that goal when I know nothing about it? Where am I even supposed to start? Contacts. I just don't have the right contacts to do this. I need to wait more before the right people show up. A solution for the resourceless. In this day and age, there is an abundance of opportunities around us. It's just not cool to use any of the above for not starting. You can find a cheap way to eat better, to exercise, to start a business, or practice a hobby. All you need is to do more research, and stop using money as an excuse. You can learn pretty much anything for free on the internet. Time is also never the issue. We all have the same amount of time. The question is, are you willing to make your goal a priority and not procrastinate in the time that you already have? As for contacts, nowadays we're more connected than we've ever been. You can find experts to help you out on any topic, as long as you're willing to look. The last minute junkie. This type of procrastinator leaves everything for the last possible second. The problem being a last minute junkie is that you end up having too little time to finish the work or you have to pull an all-nighter. As a result, your important work is not nearly as good as it could be. Here are some of the characteristics of the last minute junkie. I like working under pressure. One excuse that they use for delaying the work is that they'll be more efficient at the last minute. They like the rush of knowing that the deadline is approaching and having to do everything fast. But doing everything fast often means poor results. Surely, it will be easier tomorrow. I just don't have motivation today. It's too hot or too cold. Tomorrow, I'll be in a better mood. Whatever the specific excuse is, they rationalize delaying the work for a hope of a better future. However, the future is full of the same problems. You will have just as many reasons to procrastinate tomorrow as you have today. Fun first, work later. Last minute junkies love the quick and easy tasks. They start with something fun and put off the harder work for later in the day. As a result, there never seems to be enough time left for the hard work at the end of the day. A solution for the last minute junkies. If you're a last minute junkie and want to beat procrastination, you have to stop thinking of your future self as a different person. Stop deluding yourself that tomorrow you will be more motivated, have more time, or be more focused. If you judge by your past performance, it's clear that's not going to happen. For you, it's critical to start with the most important task first, no matter how difficult it is. Free up your calendar in the morning, don't open email or social media, don't look at your easy tasks. Just start with the most important one. Of course, just start is easier said, 
then done. It's even more difficult if the task is a big and hairy one or you don't know the first step. If you start with something difficult, even if it's a small piece, and complete it, then you've started the momentum. You'll feel more productive in all the other tasks for the day. Because they're easier, will feel like a reward. Plenty of time procrastination. Many people find it difficult to start a project when they know the deadline is a long way off. This type of procrastination is clearly visible in students who often struggle to start an essay earlier than a few days before the deadline. You may also have tasks that don't have deadlines. Take a look at your to-do list. Chances are you have at least one item that you've been putting off for weeks if not months. It's something you want to do, you know it will make things better in the long run, but you keep putting it off. How to beat it Professor of Psychology and Behavioral Economics at Duke University, Dan O'Reilly, experimented with getting his students to set their own deadlines. Ariely gave his students three assignments and let them set their own deadlines. He hypothesized that students would choose the last day of term for the deadlines as this would give them the most time to do their work and procrastinate. In reality, the majority of students chose earlier deadlines and got better grades than those who left their work until the last minute. The implications? By setting yourself deadlines, and announcing them publicly, you will be not only be able to get your work done, but you'll do a good job of it. Try setting deadlines and telling your friends, family, and co-workers about them. This public commitment should keep you on track and motivate you to meet those deadlines. So, are you a procrastinator? Still not sure? Take this quiz. 1. Do I usually delay other projects because I keep seeing more work on my current project? 2. Do I usually delay doing what I need to do until a crisis develops? 3. Do I regularly hesitate taking action because I fear what could go wrong? 4. Do I routinely sign up to do so many things that I can't find time for most of them? A single yes answer to any of these questions means that you have a procrastination problem. If you answered yes to question 1, you are a perfectionist. If you answered yes to question 2, you are the last minute junkie. If you answered yes to question 3, you are the resourceless. If you answered yes to question 4, you are plenty of time procrastinator. Everyone puts things off occasionally. But chronic procrastination jeopardizes the success of your wellness business and strains personal relationships. I hope you found this short video on procrastination useful. If you're looking for more quizzes ideas, then check out my full list of videos below. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel for further videos. Thanks for watching. Love you. Bye.